Good morning, garden friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Era, and this is Gardening on Purpose. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. I garden in Zone 8A in North Georgia, where I do gardening-related videos. And for today's video, I will be planting out my bare root roses. I bought a bunch of bare root roses from Walmart. And as you can see, they're looking nice. They're looking nice and healthy. No black stems, no brown stems, and lots of growth. So that means the rose is ready to go in the ground. Today is around 61 degrees in February, and that's a beauty, and that's the perfect time to be planting them out. So I have my roses. I have my little container to minimize my mess, which I'm still gonna be messy anyway. I've got my bucket of water so I can soak the roses while I go dig my holes and I have my gloves and my scissors to cut off um, the plastic and the wiring from the roses so let me show you my process of after bringing the roses home having them in the garage for a while and then potting them not potting them up but planting them out in the landscape guys all right let's get into it Okay guys, so I'm just going to put my gloves on because it's roses and roses have thorns so I didn't scratch my skin up too badly. And what I usually do is I just grab the rose, I take the twine off and I cut the plastic off. And this is what it looks like underneath the wrapping. right so I take this paper off and I inspect the roots to see how they are this one's looking good guys a little bit of mold on there a little bit but that's okay and I literally just shake off all of this this is a um, I think it's pine dust or something or sawdust or something that they use to hold it to maintain the moisture while it's being shipped. So I'm just going to knock that off so I can actually see the roots that I'm dealing with. And this is what it looks like, guys. And from here, got some decent roots. Look at that, it's not bad at all, guys. And I won't fight with it too much. I'm just gonna soak it in the water. And this looks like the same type of roots that I had from last year, and my roses did well. So I'm not worried about the root not looking huge. But this is the root from the pink piece, guys. So from here, all I do is soak it in the bucket. Right, so that's one. Next up, same idea. I can find my scissors, yes. So I just cut it off again. Don't cut the roots. Just take the plastic off. This one is the Love and Peace Rose. And I like doing it from the bottom because chances are the roots are not down there. Well, actually, I mistake. Look, there are roots down there. Look at that. Okay. Then again, try to pull this off. Sometimes this is the this is the part that's more tedious than actually planting the rows. It's the um, dealing with taking this off. So again, just unwrap this brown paper from here. Let whatever it came in fall off, and then you knock off as much as you can without hurting the roots. Again, these look good, guys. Look at those roots. Nice and healthy looking. And you can tell they cut it off before they shipped it. See that? You don't need um, long, long, hefty roots to prove that a rose is healthy. This looks pretty darn good, guys. Again, I'm gonna dip it in the bucket and soak it so let me do that for the other six because 
you do it once, you can do it six more times. Let me um, do that and then I'll show you the next step. Okay. Okay guys, I'm back. So all the roses are in the buckets and they are all soaking. I'm gonna let them soak for two hours. And while they're soaking, I will start digging my holes. I already have an idea of where these are gonna, at least where six of them are gonna go. And then I'll make a, a rash decision in the last two. So long as it's gonna be full sun and it's not waterlogged, the rose should be fine there. One thing I forgot to mention earlier is make sure that if your roses did not come with the tags attached to the actual rose, find a way to tag them before you put a bunch of them in the bucket. Because I was, I unwrapped two and I showed you, I put them in the bucket and I did not tag them. But I caught myself real quick and went into the house. I couldn't find any tags because Expert Gardener does not have tags attached to the 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 rose you just have the packaging you take it out once you take it out you're on your own you have to remember what that rose is so i ran inside and i was like i can't find any tags or anything that will allow me to attach it to the rose and not get into water and guys look what i ended up doing <laughs> i know it looks kind of rough but i actually have some forks that i mean you know how you buy those uh, spoons forks and knives and nobody ever uses the knives so you always run out of spoons and forks but you're left back with a bunch of knives so this is what happened and what i ended up doing was i etched the word of the rose on it so this particular rose i don't know if you can see it but this is samba i put samba here in there which just means this is the rio samba I had started doing it with a marker, but that's not going to work out too good. So I'm going to etch all of them so I know what it is. And of course, I will find a better way to do this because this doesn't look good in my garden. I don't like my garden looking like that. But I will find a way to find the new tags once they're in the ground um, and spring is around. But for now, this should be fine because it's etched in the, in the plastic. Even if it rains, it's not going to move. Um, so yeah, so remember to do that step because no matter how young or old we are, once you put a bunch of stuff in the bucket and you walk away, you're not going to remember what is what, right? And especially since they don't have any flowers right now, there are no blooms. So, um, expert gardener, like I said, they just have a nice, beautiful picture of the roses. So the, for example, this is the Mr. Lincoln and behind here, it, um, it has the instructions and even though it doesn't say to soak the rose I do anyway because from them coming out from the shipper and then being in Walmart sitting in Walmart for a while and then sitting in my garage for a while they might dry out um, you know enough where you feel like you need to rehydrate the roots and get them ready for planting so that's what I do and then here's all the sawdust from all the roses guys so next step I'm gonna show you where these roses are going so let's walk over to the first set and those are the roses right there the rose tags or the rose pictures not the tag because I can't tag it with those so my plan was to put two in here these are the ones that I had prior and I extended the bed so I can put two maybe three now I don't put my roses far apart like I see. Like mine can be two feet apart and they were fine. So this is enough space for two roses, right? Then I'll put one here between this um, Encore Azalea and this butterfly bush. Not sure which one, but I'm definitely going to put one there. As you can see, a little marker is already there. And then I have a spot for two more roses, one here and one here. I am also going to move these red hot pokers that I just recently put there. And I'm going to put two roses here. This area again gets uh, full sun, afternoon sun too, not morning sun. Anything after 12 o'clock, this is blazing hot. Roses don't mind that. So I'm going to dig those up. Um, put them back in a pot or find somewhere else to put them. They take up a lot of space when they're growing because they're like that grassy thing and they need to be cut back anyway. But I'm going to remove them and put the roses here. So, the, so that will mean I'll have space for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
And then further up there, there's going to be a rose up there. So while I wait for this to soak, let me go dig the holes. And, you know, there's nothing interesting about you seeing me digging a hole. So I'll dig the holes off camera and then I'll show you the process of me planting one or two of the roses. Then I'll plant all of them and I can show you how they all look, guys. So stay tuned. All right, guys, so um, I've marked them out a little bit more and I've dug the holes. I have also put the, the, the little picture of every rose next to the hole where I'm going to put it. So this is the medallion. The medallion is gonna go next to the gold glow. I'm sorry, I keep saying gold glow. Gold metal, right? And then further down between this butterfly bush, which is a royal red, and a white autumn lily azalea, I'm gonna put the pink piece. And then between this white autumn lily and the autumn moonlight, which is also white, I'm going to put Oklahoma. Behind there, I had said in prior videos, this space I was just holding for two rows of Sharons that, I, that are actually asleep in the garage. But I've changed my mind. Um, and I'm going to put the Mr. Lincoln here. And next to him will be Della Reese. Right? And... I chose these areas, as you know, because this is the part of the yard that gets the most sun, right? Then in that initial rose bed that I, that I made when I initially bought these guys here, I am going to put Rio Samba here. And next to Rio, I'm going to put Love and Peace. Why? Because right now I know what that is. That is heirloom. It's purple. That is gold glow, which is yellow. And that is moonlight in Paris, which is a whitey, fainty pink. So I think it will be a good match to have different colors in the beds. So what do I do? I dig my hole. I've marked them out. And now... Um, I'm showing you what I add to my soil. Now, you know I'm in the South, you know I'm in Georgia, and you know I must have clay, right? <laughs> so I do have clay. And for every hole, and I've said this before, every hole that I dig in this yard, I put soil conditioner in it. It helps to break the clay up and helps it to not recompact. And it helps with the drainage because we get a lot of rain in the winter and clay maintains water anyway. Roses don't like to sit in wet soil. So this soil conditioner will really, really help out. And what I do after I plant my rose is I top dress with mushroom compost. The compost that I like the most is a mushroom compost. And I'll show you that when I actually top dress. But I won't be top dressing in the winter. I'll be top dressing in the spring when these, 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 um, these plants really begin to take off. So like I said, all eight holes that I dug, they're all going to get uh, soil conditioner. Now, different parts of my yard have different types of clay right so in the rose bed the official rose bed this has been worked so much so it doesn't look as bad but you can see I do have clay right there but it's not that hard clay look at that it's clay nonetheless right and I have worked this bed so many times I've put uh, chopped up leaves, I've put compost, I've put all kinds of stuff in here, um, soil conditioner, and it's not as bad. Look what the hole looks like, guys. This is supposed to be clay, but I mixed it up with, well, not like right now, but I, this is actually mixed up with composted leaves and some soil conditioner, but I will add some more when I actually plant the rose. So that's one type of clay there, right? Further over next to the neighbor, it's this brownie looking clay here. Look at this one. Right? So my clay is not terrible. And I don't mind having clay because we all know clay has the most nutrients. Yes, it's, you know, it does maintain a lot of water, but it's the most nutrient dense um, soil. So I don't complain about my clay. I just work with the clay. Um, and then further over in the yard over there is a even more hard clay. Like, let me show you right here. You see how you can see a little ready stuff coming out of here? That's some serious hard clay right there. 
right? You can tell because it's poking out. So different parts of the yard have different types of clay and I have worked with it. The roses don't mind so long as you help the soil with the soil conditioner and the compost, your roses will be fine. That's what I did for these and these performed absolutely magnificent. I will show you now. The roses are still soaking in the bucket. So let's get over there and I'll show you what they look like and then finally we will get these guys in the ground so here they are and my little rinky-dee labeling system <laughs> don't judge me guys <laughs> um, okay so this guy here look at that root look at that root guys looks quite healthy to me it might not be long and extra because some of these long roses, when you buy them, you still have to cut them off anyway. But these roots look pretty good. This one is the Oklahoma. And they're looking good, guys. They're just soaking in the water. I'm waiting for that two hour to, 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 um, to come so I can actually put them in the ground. So I will show you the process. I have clay, so I do not have my graft below or even close to that clay i have it up a whole inch and let me show you in the ones that i planted prior look how far up these are and i'm in 8a so we don't get you know we freeze once in a while and we don't get snow you see how far up that is it is nowhere close to the clay see how far up that is nowhere close because again it's going to rot if you have that thing underneath the soil i would never in the clay don't put it on well i'm not gonna tell you what to do but in clay i don't put it level or under everything in this ground is above the soil level an inch and depending on what it is it could be an inch and a half so let's get to planting the exciting part guys
They are all in the ground, guys. Nice and tucked in here in February. The middle of February, I put in all my remaining beer root roses. So, Oklahoma, Dilla Reese, Mr. Lincoln, Pink Peace, Love and Peace, they're all in the ground, guys. So, that's my process for what I did the last two years, and here we are in the third year. This is my process for planting the beer root roses that I get from Walmart. Let me know if you have questions, guys. It's pretty easy. You just soak the roses, you dig the hole, you amend your soil, and you make sure the, the, the roses are actually in sun. They do well if they get six or more, not four, not three, not five, but six or more hours of sun, and you should get what the picture shows. So like I said, these are the ones from the last time, and they are looking great. I just need to prune them back one more time. So the last thing I have to do really is just water them in. And this is the same water that I was using to soak them, and I will just literally just reuse that. So. Anyway, guys, let me know if you have questions. Please like, please share, please comment. Let me know if you have any questions. I will see you on the next video, guys. Have a great one and enjoy your roses.